Hello everyone, this is Amal Naruto. Welcome to my channel. So today I'll be discussing about the error functions, but in terms of the counter contour groups. Okay. So, so today the topic is error functions. in terms of or you can in form of in the form of contour graphs okay so what is meant by contour graph so this is a contour actually so this particular shape is nothing but a counter okay so you want you may be wondering uh what is this kind of a shape and uh what are these numbers actually what are they actually trying to portray so i'll be explaining all these things so for that you need to understand this is a contour graph okay and here you are you are actually seeing some kind of a bowl shape right so this is a bowl shape okay and here this ball shape is in the form of a uh, is in the form of a circular shape okay it's a, it's in the form of a circular shape and actually we are actually seeing this in a 3d form in a three dimensional form so it is visible like a ball shape but when you look at this particular ball from the top view then you will be uh, finding there are some kind of a circular shape involved in this particular ball shape okay so what i'm saying is so there is a kind of a, a circular shape like this okay okay and here in this is one ring and this is another ring okay and here this is another ring so what i'm trying to say is all this bowl has formed with with a kind of rings a ring like structures okay so what i'm trying to say is see here right so like this it's a kind of a bowl here now it's a kind of a bowl here so this is the upper ring right and this is the second ring this is the third ring and like this we have infinity number of rings okay so but when you look at here that is the bottom ring this is the bottom ring here which is the uh, outermost ring so this ring is the smallest ring out of all those things okay but when you uh, see here these are all the rings so what is the meaning of these rings here on each of the rings we will be having some kind of combination of combination of our slope that is m and our intercept that is the c okay each ring is having this kind of a combination of m and c so our each m will be having m and c here we will be having some kind of m and c and here we will be having some kind of m and c uh, maybe this one is m1 maybe this one is m2 uh, and here we will be having some kind of uh, maybe m3 and c and so on like this okay and so on we will be having so many slopes and uh, intercepts on each of the rings here so we need to find that particular uh, best combination of slope and intercept so when i say best combination of slope and intercept so what does that mean actually so this is the situation here right let's imagine this particular axis is nothing but our slope m okay and this particular axis is nothing but our uh, intercept c okay so when you try to project this particular m onto this contour then here it will be uh, touching this contour at this particular point and when you try to project this particular uh, intercept here onto this contour both the m and c are actually touching at this particular point right so that particular point is nothing but the our 
best fit line or best fit plane or hyperplane okay so uh, what is the difference between the line and plane and hyperplane actually so line is when you only have uh, one independent variable and one dependent variable then you will be having this kind of a line okay but when you have uh, multiple features that is when you have uh, more number of independent variables uh, that is x1 x2 and so on then you will not be having this kind of line uh, instead you will be having some kind of a plane like structure like this okay so this is a kind of bowl like structure okay so that is the thing here <clears throat> okay Okay, so our agenda is to find this particular point which gives us the best optimum M and C. Or in other words, we can say this is the point where we can get the uh, best optimal minima of slope and uh, intercept. Okay, so we need to find that. So when, this is a kind of view, uh, nothing but this is a front view, right? When you look at uh, in a three-dimensional view, you'll be... Uh, I mean, you'll be seeing this kind of a shape. But what if you want to sh uh, see this? What if you want to see this kind of a shape in a two-dimensional format, right? Uh, maybe from the top view. If you want to see this particular ball from the top view, then what happens? See here so this is the thing here okay so you'll be you'll be having this kind of a shape see i'm i'm just erasing all these things here okay so if you try to see this particular ball okay this ball is having a shape which is a circular shape when you try to when you try to look this particular ball from the top view right your ball will be having this kind of a shape here okay now okay so here this particular this particular axis let's imagine this particular dimension is nothing but our slope m okay and this particular dimension that is the horizontal dimension is nothing but our uh, intercept c okay so these are the uh, these are the rings in our uh, in our shape that is the contour here right so what is this particular shape is actually trying to portray here is <clears throat> in this particular contour plot every ring represents one quantum of error right so the innermost ring that is this particular ring the innermost ring or you can call this as the bullseye you can also call this innermost ring as the bullseye this innermost ring is nothing but it lies the bottom of this particular uh, ball shape right so we are seeing this particular entire ball from the top view we are seeing here from here so when you try to see this particular ball shape from the top view uh, you'll be seeing this particular, uh, the ball, uh, the bullseye is lying at the bottom, right? So you'll be having a shape like this, okay? This innermost ring is nothing but a bullseye, okay? So here we will get the best combination of uh, the coefficients that is uh, slopes and the uh, intercept, right? So I'm, what I'm trying to say is this particular ring and this particular ring, we will be having the best combo of uh, slope and intercept so what happens if you find the best combination of uh, slope and intercept this particular right so this particular best combination of the slope and intercept will actually uh, reduces the this reduces sum of squared error that is ssc okay this this will gives us the least possible ssc okay this reduces the ssc and finally what we get is the 
least possible sum of squared error. We have already talked about this particular squared error, sum of squared error, uh, in in our previous videos at the start of the linear regression, right? Please try to <coughs> watch those videos before coming here, so that you'll get uh, you'll get some kind of better understanding. So what I'm trying to say, yeah. So this is the situation here. So now this particular outermost ring, like uh, okay. I'll try to draw this particular thing here. I'll try to draw here. It would be better. See, see, this is our slope that is M. Here, just uh, uh, try to understand here, you will be having number of slopes like M1, M2, M3 and so on. Yeah, M1, M2, M3 are nothing but the slopes for each of the variables. Here I'm just trying to consider only one independent variable that is X and one dependent variable that is Y. So that you will only have one slope that is M and you will only have one intercept that is C, right? But what if you have multiple uh, variables that is you, you also have X1, X2, X3 and one dependent variable Y. Then what happens is you will get M1, M2, M3, you will also get one uh, uh, intercept that is C, right? So this will be the scenario here. Did you get that? But for the uh, for the time consuming and uh, for the time being and uh, uh, for for the sake of simplicity, I'm just considering my independent variable that is one single independent variable and one dependent variable, so that you will only have one slope and one intercept, right? So that's the thing here. <clears throat> okay so here i'll be having on this dimension here i'll be having one slope and here on this horizontal dimension i'll be having one intercept okay now i'm trying to draw this particular shape circular shape okay this is the innermost ring right this is the bullseye Okay, so this is the shape here. So this is the shape of the ball. So this will be the shape here. And here at the bottom, you will be having this bullseye, which is nothing but this particular eye bullseye, right? So here for this particular bullseye, I'll be shading with this particular color. So this is our bullseye, okay? So, so here, this particular outermost ring, right? On this outermost ring, also we will have uh, some kind of M and some kind of C here on this particular ring. For example, here I'll be having some M and here I'll be having some kind of C, right? So here, here also I'll be having M and C and here also I'll be having some M and C. Here also I'll be having some M and C. Finally, here also I'll be having some M and C. But on this particular outer ring here, this particular M and C will give us uh, will gives you the maximum sum of squared error, right? Why? Because this is the outermost ring here. So this outermost ring will give you the uh, uh, some kind of combination of uh, slope and intercept, which will give you the maximum sum of squared error. So this error will be the huge error, right? Likewise, we'll also have this particular bullseye, right? So this bull's eye, this bullseye will give us the uh, best, best possible uh, slope and intercept, which will give us the, which will give you the least sum of squared error, that is least SSE. Okay. So that's it. And in between the in between the bullseye and in between the outermost ring, we will also have uh, some kind of uh, we will also have 
in between those two see here I, i'll be shading with some other colors one minute see the innermost ring would be in the purple color right so this would be in the red color i'm just shading this with red color this red color represents that it's a outermost ring here right and now uh, we also have the uh, i mean we also have some other rings which are lying in between those two right these rings are actually lying in between the outermost and the innermost rings right so these rings also like this ring and this ring will also gives us uh, some kind of a, some combination of m and c okay which will gives you uh, some sum of squared error this will also give you some kind of uh, sum of squared error but this is not that much low and that much high this will be in the moderate range why because these rings are actually lying uh, in between the bull's eye and the outermost ring so this is the thing here <clears throat> okay so what happens is here when you built a model at first okay when you build a model at first what happens is our model will assign some kind of random c you have built a model okay so now what happens is this model will try to assign some random slope and intercept okay some this model will assign some random slope and intercept that is it's performing some kind of error in prediction okay so here initially our model is assigning some random m and c which means this is not the best one okay till now we haven't find the best one this is not this is not the best fit line okay this is not the best fit line this is just some uh, random initialization which is, which our model is doing okay and what happens is now through gradient descent using gradient descent we find the best fit line okay we find the best fit line so we move from the in this particular process we we use gradient descent and what happens is <clears throat> i'll tell you see here at, at first uh, we built our model and then that model will initialize some kind of a random value right uh, let's imagine here uh, you'll you'll have some kind of m and here you will have some kind of c okay initially our model will assign some kind of random values of m and c here then what happens is we will be moving uh, from our outer ring to this uh, towards the bull's eye okay we will be moving from outer ring towards the innermost ring using gradient descent we will be using gradient descent and from this ring to you will be going to this ring and here you will find some best combinations of uh, uh, m and c even though you found even though you find the combinations of m and c these are still not the best combinations of uh, slope and intercept right and so what happens is you will move from this ring to this ring here also you will find some kind of m and c here okay and what happens is this is still not the best combination of m and c so what you can do is you will still try to move towards the innermost ring which is this so you can confirm that this is the best possible m and c why because this is the out this is the innermost ring and uh, beyond this ring we don't have any kind of ring so you can confirm that this is the best possible uh, slope and intercept and you will arrive at this particular point using gradient descent from outer ring to innermost ring you will arrive at this particular point you will travel this entire journey using this gradient descent kind of approach did you get that so linear algorithm our linear algorithm start from this outermost ring here right and it will arrives at this particular innermost ring okay and our linear algorithm stops and when we get the best fit combination of line i mean best uh, best combination of 
uh, slopes and intercept at this particular uh, innermost ring. At this particular point, our linear algorithm stops. Okay. So this is the best fit line. At this point, you will get the best fit, uh, best combinations of M and C, which will obviously gives you the best fit line. Right. So this is the usual intuition behind these uh, concepts of error function uh, in the form of contour graphs. Okay. But when when I want to talk specifically about uh, the uh, the ridge regression and the lasso regression, so at first I'll be talking about the ridge regression first. Okay. So for example, let's imagine. Okay, so let's imagine these are the rings here. Okay, these are the rings. And you'll have some kind of a uh, shaded region. Okay. So you'll have some kind of a shaded region, which is nothing but... Let's imagine this is the shaded region here. So this shaded region, you have a name for this particular shaded region, which is nothing but our constraint region. constraint region right so <clears throat> so what i'm trying to say is i'll explain this mm, for example what is the for lasso here i'm trying to explain the lasso regression part okay okay so what is the error function for this lasso here so you will be having this kind of expression that is i equal to 1 to n, sigma equal to 1 to n and uh, yi, this is our actual minus this is our predict predicted one and whole square. So together this term is known as the loss function, right? Plus here you will be having some penalty term that is the lambda here and into we are actually summing up all the squares of our coefficients, right? Beta is nothing but our coefficient and we are actually squaring all our coefficients and then we are actually summing up there, right? So sigma equal to i to 1 to n. So this is our expression for the lasso regression, right? So here, just try to observe this particular part. Try to observe this particular part. So when you, when you try to visualize this particular part, so how, how is it looking like actually? So what is the uh, formula for the area of circle? So we have area of a circle here, right? So what is the formula? So you will have pi into r square, right? So just try to compare both the formulas here. Just try to compare both the formulas. So here, if you compare both the formulas, here you will get to know that uh, Lambda is looking, lambda is similar. Okay, lambda is somewhat similar to uh, pi. And uh, here, beta square is somewhat looking similar to r square. Right. So here, this ha these having the same kind of property. If you try to observe, when you try to compute this particular formula, pi into r square, you will get a shape of the circle, which is the circular shape. Okay. So let's imagine this is a kind of a circular shape, right? So here also, here also, this particular uh, lasso regression, in this particular uh, expression of lasso regression, 
this particular term that is the our uh, penalty term and uh, together uh, this particular penalty into our coefficients square of coefficients this particular part is actually uh, i mean this particular part is actually having some kind of behavior as of the area of the circle formula so that's the reason why this particular uh, region constraint region is in the form of a circle right so see here this particular circle this particular constraint region is in the form of a circular shape why because this is the reason here lambda into beta square this is very much similar to this particular formula that is pi into r square due to that reason this particular constraint region is having a uh, circular shape okay so this is geometrical <clears throat> so now we need to find the best best combination of m and c which minimizes the uh, sum of squared error right we know that but don't violate the constraint this constraint region that is our combination of m and c will be within this particular constraint region what i'm trying to say is you you will need to find this particular best possible m and c right which gives us the least uh, sum of squared error right so but here we have a condition which is nothing but our m and c will be in this within this particular constraint region so here we will have this kind of a uh, condition here okay and uh, whenever that m and c uh, is lying within this particular constraint region and it is actually uh, staying somewhat closer towards this uh, inner ring right so what i am trying to say is so what i am trying to say is okay so let's imagine this here and uh, here okay so here so this is your shaded part right so this is your constraint region now here the condition is we need to have our m best possible m and c within this particular constraint region our m and c should only lie within this particular region and it should what happens if our m and c uh, is actually lying at this particular point i mean on this outermost ring here okay so what happens yes it is actually satisfying one condition that is it is lying within the constraint here okay within the constraint it's lying so uh, and here uh, i have another condition that is it needs to be lie uh, very much closer closer to the bull's eye so these are the two conditions here okay okay so this is the condition here so what happens if it lies uh one minute okay so here the condition is it should be our m and c best possible combination of m and c should lie within the constraint and those m and c combination will also be uh, will also need to be lie to very much closer towards this particular bull's eye right so these are the two conditions here so let's imagine our m and c okay our m and c is lying on this outermost ring okay so what happens this condition is true okay but here is it lying very much closer towards this particular bull's eye here no so this condition is wrong so when we try to uh, move towards uh, one one further ring like uh, our m and c is actually lying on this particular outer uh, on this particular second outermost ring then what happens this condition is actually true 
but this condition is the true or what closer to the bu bullseye no why because here still we have some kind of ring right so this condition is false what happens when we try to uh, lie on this particular exact line here so what happens this condition is true why because we are still lying within this constraint region we haven't violated that and when you try to uh, measure the distance from here to from here to the bullseye here there is very much closer distance so here this condition is actually uh, getting true right so we need to find we need to approach that particular place here we need to approach that particular uh, place and also besides that we need to be we need to lie within this constraint region that is the circular region right so whenever you will get a combo of uh, mnc like that which is satisfying both the conditions here that will be the that will be considered as the best fit line right So that's the thing here. <clears throat> okay, but uh, when I try to when I try to uh, when I I mean when I say this, what is the probability of happening that? Like I need to be I need to have this particular position, right? See here. I'll try to zoom. See here. Just observe this. See. I need to have. I mean, I need to, I want this particular position, right? So I need to have this particular, uh, f uh, this particular point, right? This first into, I mean, this first, this first two points I need to have, where it is actually lying within the circle, and it's also very much closer uh, towards my uh, bullseye, right? So I need to have this particular uh, point, which gives us the best combination of M and C. Best combination of M and C, and this gives us the least uh, sum of squared error, right? <clears throat> so this is the thing. Now, what is the probability of hit? Now, what is the probability of getting this particular uh, situation here? I need to know that. Okay, so what is the probability here? So probability of probability of happening probability of happening that particular point is very low is equal to very low. Why? Because the contour circles and the constrained circles will can't be tangent actually okay why because these are the concentric circles right these are the uh, i mean these are the contour circles actually and this is the constraint circle right <clears throat> see here see here Just a minute. Okay, so see here, uh, one minute. So the probability of happening this particular point here is very very low why because here these are the concentric circles right so when you see here these are the uh, when you these, you can call these as contour circles actually so these are the contour circles but here we have this shaded part right so we have the shaded part like this right so this is nothing but the what you can call constraint circle so this is the constraint circle and these are the contour circles so here we know we can uh, observe that 
the contour circles and the constraint circles can't be tangent like so what does that mean actually so here like they won't be get attached to each other like uh, they there won't be any kind of situation where our uh, constant re uh, constant region is is touching is touching those uh, const is touching those contour circles right so there won't be situation like this this won't be the situation why because we will never be uh, having any kind of uh, tangent between these constraint uh, between these contours contours between these contour circles and the constraint region okay so you will never get this kind of a situation so that's why the probability of this particular constraint this particular constraint touching uh, these constraint uh, these bulls bullseye is very very much low so due to this reason right why because they won't have that kind of property forming tangent between these contour circles and this constraint circles right so this is the situation so what happens if they don't form any kind of tangent like this here what if they both uh, they both are not uh, forming any kind of tangent then what happens then all our dimensions won't be zero right that is Our dimensions will be zero actually sorry our dimensions will be zero what does this mean actually so we'll have uh, x1 x2 x3 x4 and so on right so you'll have all these things and now for each of the independent variables you will have some kind of coefficients right for example you have maybe uh, plus 0 0.23 and minus 0 0.59 and so on you will have all these coefficients but when you try to uh, Sorry, sorry, sir. Sorry, the the condition here is. Sorry, I've just confused between the last and the ridge uh, regression here. Our dimensions. What happens is here. Here, what happens is our dimensions won't be zero. That is our dimensions won't become zero why because this is the reason here they they won't get uh, i mean they won't get attached to each other i mean they won't be forming any kind of tangent like this these two circles that is these are the contour circles and these are the constraint circles so these two uh, form of shapes uh, won't be forming any kind of tangent like this so due to this reason all our dimensions won't become zero right they will be approximately approach towards zero, but they will never become uh, zero. In this, this is happening inside this lasso regression part, right? So that would be the reason. <clears throat> so for that, what we can do is, I'll explain. See here, these are these are the contour circles. Okay, these are our contour circles. And uh, this is our constraint. This is our constraint region, right? So what happens is here we'll be having Sorry. Right. 
actually okay so here these are our contour circles and this particular thing is our constraint circle constraint circle right so here what are, what is happening here is here we'll be having some kind of a scale like scale like thing like this here we'll be having all the values here like this okay so here what is the meaning of this particular scale here is this is nothing but the value alpha okay so here the alpha would be initially zero but here the alpha would be having maximum value that is maybe infinity right so the alpha will travel from zero to infinity in this kind of position so what happens if we will have we will be having some two kind of scenarios that is if alpha is high okay that means if alpha approaches this particular infinity if alpha approaches this particular situation then what happens is our constraint circle right this particular constraint circle will be very much smaller did you get that constraint circle will be very much smaller okay we will be very much smaller that is what is the meaning of this smaller here that means tighter it will get very tight see uh, when this particular alpha is here right when alpha is zero then what happens is you will get a situation like this you will having some bigger you will having some bigger constraint region and uh, here you will be having some alpha right so this would be the this would be the situation here when alpha is zero if alpha is here in this particular zero position this would be the scenario why because the constant circle uh, will get some kind of freedom so that's why it will get expanded with its original form then what if what if on this particular scale if alpha approaches high then what happens this particular uh, freedom it won't get any kind of freedom here now what happens is <clears throat> what happens is this will be minimized here okay this will be minimized then this particular constraint region will get tightened here will get tightened so you will get this kind of a shape here so this is the reason that's what i'm explaining here right so just remember this thing right you, you know the you know scissors right you know the scissors see these are the scissors let's imagine this these are the scissors so what happens if you if you just widen if you just widen these particular two two handles here so what happens if you widen these two things see you have just widened the two uh, these two handles you have widened this handle and you have widened this handle then what happens what happens you you will have so much gap here in between these two let's imagine this is our constraint region if you widen this thing means or uh, that's the meaning your alpha is at the zero position is at the in uh, zero position if you widen these two handles then what if you tighten those things what if you tighten those things like uh, here right these are the two uh, these are the scissors here these are the scissors okay 
So here, what if you tighten those scissors here? Then what happens? The gap will get reduced. So the constraint will get smaller. Right. The constraint. The constraint will get smaller here. So the let's imagine these are the handles here. These are the handles. And what if you? What if you? Uh, I mean, what if you just move closer towards the handle? Then what happens? You know the process of uh, scissors, right? I mean, how does the scissor works when these handles are? at the uh, when the gap between these two handles are huge then you will get some kind of uh, space in between these two scissors what if those two handles uh, the gap between these handles are lesser then the space would be very very small that's what it is happening here right so that's the simple logic here when alpha is at the zero level the uh, you, this particular constraint will have some uh, bigger shape what if the alpha is at the infinity level infinity level this constraint region will get reduced and it will become very much tighter right what happens if this become very much tighter then you can say that our model then you can say that our model performs more errors more errors in the train data Right, when alpha is at the infinitive value, then what happens is, what happens is, the, our model will get. Uh, I mean, this particular constraint will get tighter. That means our model will performs more errors in train data. So this is the thing here, and also we will have another kind of situation where if our alpha is at zero, that is, if alpha is at this particular zero level, then what happens? there won't be any constraint right if alpha is at the zero level then there would be there won't be any kind of constraint did you get that that is what i'm trying to say is if alpha is at the zero value there won't be any kind of circle this circle will get uh, i mean will get disappeared why because if alpha is a, if alpha equal to 0 this circle would be very much smaller very much minute and it will get automatically disappear but if alpha is at this particular middle position then uh, then this uh, constraint will have some kind of um, medium shape like this okay see i will try to draw separately Okay, so we'll have the three situations here. That is when alpha is zero and two is when alpha is uh, medium. And the three is when alpha is high. Okay, so for that what happens is, right? So here you will be having the contours here. Okay, here you will be having the contours. When alpha is equal to zero, then what happens is you won't be having any kind of uh, uh, constraint here because the constraint is very much smaller. That doesn't uh, appear, right? But what if the alpha is median? You will have this kind of a situation. You'll have this kind of a situation. Here you'll be having some medium amount of uh, constraint circle here. And here you will be having, here you will be having all the contours here, right? But what if alpha is high actually? Constraint will be very much smaller. You you will still have the constraint here, but you will get the smaller constraint, right? These are your contours. These are your contours. That means the, in this situation, there will be no constraint here, no constraint circle. In this situation, uh, decent 
decent amount of constraint cycle there will be constraint circle but that would be some medium level decent amount of constraint circle here you will get this smaller smaller constraint circle right so this is the thing here these are the three situations you will be having depends upon the value of uh, alpha right so here sometimes alpha is also called as you can also call alpha or you can also term uh, you can also term it as lambda also right you can also call it as alpha you can also call it as lambda why because why i'm saying you can call both both the ways why because see here see remember here the lambda term where did you see this particular lambda term here where did you see you have seen this lambda term here here right so you will get the possible best amount of uh, um, uh, i mean best amount of slope and intercept depends upon this particular lambda value right this will actually penalize your coefficients so what happens when you penalize your coefficients when you reduce the magnitude of your coefficients what happens you will get the best fit line right uh, there won't be any kind of uh, curse of dimensionality situation so here this lambda is nothing but this lambda is nothing but alpha only right there won't be uh, any difference between these alpha and lambda both are same terminology is same right so here simply just try to understand if lambda is increasing right that is if alpha or lambda values increases coefficients become smaller and smaller right that means let's imagine this constraint as our coefficient right and uh, this alpha as our uh, let's imagine this alpha as our lambda okay so if lambda is actually increasing then what happens our coefficients will get smaller and smaller that is it will get decreased right so then what happens y your your cost function will get reduced right the p the penalty term will get reduced <clears throat> then what happens if the lambda is very larger the smaller the sum of the squared error if the coefficients are very much smaller then you will get the uh, smaller amount of uh, very low sum of squared error right smaller amount of uh, sum of squared coefficients and as a result the tighter the constraint it will get the uh, the constraint will get tri uh, tighter right so if the tighter uh, the constraint region is very much tighter then larger will be the contour circles these contour circles shape will have you will have this larger contours okay you will get the larger contours here then what happens that will be the tangent to the boundary of the constraint if the constraints are actually larger then automatically you will form some kind of a tangent here between this constraint and the uh, contours here you will have the uh, boundary here right so the higher the lambda then the stronger will be the shrinkage here that is shrinkage means the tighter will be the constraint circle right hence uh, our surface or the model will become more smooth right? because the magnitude of the coefficients are actually getting decreased then our model will become more smooth smoother model okay what happens more smoother the surface if you have more smoother surface then what happens here <clears throat> more well the model performs in the production if you have the smoother model then you can say that model will perform well in production that is in on the unseen data it will perform very much well right and when we move away from the model with the sharp peaks and valleys that is the complex models to the smoother surface that is the simpler model we reduce the variance error but bias errors go up right so what happens is we use the grid search cv here we use 
I'll tell you in another part here. So we use grid search CV. Here we need to find out. We find out what is the best value per our lambda that is alpha, right? What happens if you select the best value for the lambda? This will enough. This will only gives you the best fit line here, right? So this is the situation in case if it is a lasso regression. Did you get that? This is the situation here. In case if it is a lasso regression, these all the these are all the things which you'll get to know in the lasso part. This is this will happen inside this particular lasso regression part, right? So now I'll be explaining the ridge regression part in terms of contours. Okay. Okay, so here, One small confusion here. Just one minute. So, <clears throat> so one small confusion here. Uh, the thing here is this is not the lasso one, actually, this is the ridge one. Okay. So this is the part of ridge regression, actually. Sorry for uh, my mistake. So the entire concept is the similar thing. The entire concept is similar. The formula here involves lambda into beta square, which is nothing but the penalty term into the squaring up and uh, summing up all our coefficients, right? So this is very much similar to the area of a circle. So that's why the reason why you are getting uh, the circular shape for your constraint region, right? So now you need to find the best uh, M and C, right? But in reality, the probability of happening that is very much low. Why? Because these are our uh, contour circles and this is our constraint regions, uh, constraint circle. Both of them, both of them uh, forming together as a tangent is the probability of that is very much low. Okay. They won't get tangent in reality. So what happens is you need to have two kinds of uh, situations here. But one thing is. Uh, all your M and C, best combination of M and C would lie in between, within this particular constraint region. And also it should lie very much closer to this particular uh, bull's, bull's ring here, right? So that would be the scenario. So for that, what we can use is, we'll use this particular term that is the alpha here. Alpha is very much similar to the lambda. You can also call it as lambda. This will reduce this particular uh, constraint size depend upon it uh, depend upon the value of the lambda here. Here we'll be having three kind of a situations here, right? So one thing is if alpha is zero, you won't be having any constraint circle. The constraint circle will will get di disappeared, right? So uh, if alpha is medium, right? If alpha is medium, then what happens is 
you will get a decent amount of constraint circle you will get some kind of a decent visible shape of uh, constraint circle but what if lambda is uh, high or alpha is high what happens you will get bigger amount of co contour circles and smaller amount of uh, constraint circle if you are getting this smaller amount of constraint circle means that means your coefficients are actually penalized that means uh, our model has reduced our uh, coefficients what if the coefficient magnitude of the coefficients has been reduced uh, then you will get the lowest uh, possible sum of squared error right then what happens is if you are if your magnitude of the coefficients are very much uh, penalized uh, very much reduced then you will get the smoother model if your mod if your model is very much smooth then your model will perform well very well in the production environment right so where do you how do you define the i mean how do you select the uh, lambda here you will try to you will get an option to select the best possible lambda in grid search cv while performing the hyperparameter tuning that is grid, using grid search cv you will have this particular parameter called lambda there you can uh, there you can select whatever you want you can just uh, try to uh, select uh, lambda value in a trial and error method just just play with it just try, start with the lowest value and go with the uh, highest value and uh, in between the giving the range of that high, lower to highest value you can play with that so and record the results what is it giving uh, uh, giving you the results so uh, likewise you will get the best fit lambda for that you will you will be having best fit line so this is the scenario when it comes to the ridge regression now i'll be explaining what is meant by a lasso regression here okay so here i'll be explaining the lasso regression in terms of contours here. okay so before that what is the formula for the lasso regression here i equal to 1 to n this is the expression right this is the actual term and this is the predicted term y hat and we are actually squaring it up this is our loss function plus we'll have some kind of term that is mod b Did you get that? Here we will have lambda into mod b. So this would be your formula for the lasso regression actually. So now what happens is here when you try to compare here it is not the beta square. Here it is the mod beta. That means the slope I mean so the shape of it is not a circle why right? because when you try to compare what is the area of the circle pi r square right so here earlier we will be having lambda into beta square right so these two are similar so that's why our constraint region is having uh, a shape of circle right but here when you try to compare here this is the mod here right here it is having lambda into mod that means it doesn't have the circular shape anymore it will be having some kind of parallelogram shape like this our constraint region will be having will be in the form of a parallelogram region earlier earlier the formula is actually matching so that's why the reason it is actually in the form of a circular region but here now it doesn't have any kind of square it is the mod here so that's why it will have our constraint region will have parallelogram shape so based on that i am drawing my contour circles and my constraint region so i'll be having this kind of a shape here <clears throat> okay so these are my contour circles let's imagine that and uh, this is my constraint region okay
right so these these are my constant region actually okay so what happens here is you'll be having dimensions you'll be having dimensions like this you'll also having dimensions like this so this is another dimension this is another dimension right so for example let's imagine this horizontal dimension as our slope that is m and this vertical dimension as our uh, intercept that is c okay let's imagine this the point where it is actually touching on to the contour circles is known as the point which will gives us the best combination of m and c right here the constraint region oftenly touches contour circles exactly on the dimensions right see here earlier we don't have any kind of situation like that because all our uh, all our contours and all our uh, and this constant region won't be touching why because these two they don't have the behavior like this right these are the contours these are the constants so they won't form any kind of tangent like this i mean uh, naturally but here the parallelogram this is nothing but our constraint region is act naturally touching this particular contour circles at a particular point right so then if this is the optimal combination of m and c this point is nothing but the will gives us the optimal combination that is best combination of the m and c then other dimensions will be zero that means if this is the dimension at which we are getting m and c this dimension right this this dimension will become zero this dimension is zero right so this dimension won't have any kind of effect why because we are actually we have actually got our best combination of m and c on this particular dimension right so why don't we consider this particular dimension which is having no effect so that's why this dimension will become zero this won't be having any kind of effect so we ignore that that's why many of the coefficients will become zero if the dimension is become zero obviously the coefficient will also be zero right did you get that if the dimension is actually becoming zero then the obviously the coefficient will also be become zero so this is the reason why when you compute the lasso regression part uh, uh, most of the coefficients will become zero like uh, for example if you try to uh, find the coefficients here uh, you'll you'll try to see like this for example 1.26 plus 1.26 Minus uh, 0 0.29, 0, 0, 0, 2.79, 0, 0, 3.29, 0, 0. Like, uh, did you get that? While computing the lasso regression part, you'll get to know that most of the columns are become, I mean, have become zero. Why? Because this is the reason. Why? Because we on this particular dimension, we are actually getting. Uh, the best possible amount of m and c here right so we don't consider this kind of a dimension that is this this dimension this entire dimension will definitely become zero that's the reason why our if any dimension is zero then automatically the coefficient of that particular dimension will also be zero that's the reason that is the reason why lasso regression can also perform dimensionality reduction right so due to this due to this Lasso regression can also perform dimensionality reduction. Dimensionality reduction, right? But ridges can't. Why? Because rid but see. But ridges can't do that. Why? Because they they don't have any kind of uh, natural occurring uh, things like here, right? This is actually naturally occurring, uh, naturally giving us the best possible M and C, right? But in case of a ridge regression here, in case of ridge regression, you don't have that kind of a scenario. So what happens is only lasso regression can be, uh, can perform dimensionality reduction. Okay. So, uh, but ridges can't. Ridge can weak the dimensions. That means in the ridge regression, in the ridge regression, you'll be having the coefficients which is somewhat closer to zero like 0 0.5 0 0.23 0 0.12 you'll have this kind of coefficients here 
but they won't become uh, exactly zero, right? They won't become exactly as zero. Did you get that? So uh, in rigid in rigid equation, you will find the weak dimensions that is uh, approximately uh, zero, but not zero, right? So lasso can be able to drop them, but last but lasso if you if it figures if it figures out that these dimensions are of having no value, then it will definitely drop these kind of uh, dimensions. And obviously those dimensions will always become zero, right? So the most optimal of all the solutions is the one which satisfies the constraint and also minimizes the SSE. That means the MNC you will get at that particular point, which it should always lie within this particular parallelogram region. And it will also lying closer to the uh, bullseye also, right? So if this is the situation here, see here. See here. If our M and C is lying within this particular parallelogram and it's also lying very much closer to the uh, bullseye, then this would be the exact position where we get the least amount of uh, uh, sum of squared error least amount of sum of squared error which obviously gives us the uh, best fit line right this is the scenario so yes uh, with this we have I mean, the topic of lasso and ridge regression has come to an end. Uh, this is the further deep, I mean, deep kind of uh, teaching for the lasso and ridge regression in terms of contours here, right? So by this, you will get to know what is actually happening behind the behind that math equation, right? You'll, you'll have this kind of equation, right? So here, lambda is actually penalizing our coefficients, okay? And here you will have this loss, uh, here you will have this loss function. Here you will have this log loss function actually. So what is it actually trying to do behind the math? That's what I have explained here. This is the part of lasso and ridge regression, but in terms of contours here, with the help of these contour circles, I have explained you what is actually happening behind those uh, mathematical expressions I have explained that so that's the thing with this we came to end <clears throat> we came to end for the last one ridge regression part now I'll be showing you somewhat uh, something like uh, uh, last one ridge regression implementation part right and uh, after finishing that implementation part I'll be explaining the another another last method uh, that is left in this linear regression series, which is nothing but the elastic net. That's also a regularization method. So that's a simple method. I'll be explaining that in the next second video. Uh, after this video, I'll be ex uh, I'll be explaining the implementation part of this last and ridge regression. After that, I'll I'll tell you about the elastic net, which is a regularization technique used in linear regression. Right. So that's all for this now. I hope you have got some real good amount of understanding <clears throat> regarding the last one ridge regression, right? So I hope uh, I hope you have got a real good amount of clarity. Now I'll see you in the next video. That's all for this session. Bye bye. Take care. Jai Hind.